Praise God. Hallelujah. The Lord is good and all His mercy is endured forever. Amen. And to Jesus be all the glory Amen. forever. Amen. 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 Glory Amen. to God. Hallelujah. Today I'm with my good friend Peter. I should say Pastor Peter, but he doesn't like you know going by title. He's a very humble man. Right. Right. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Actually, he's the leader of the Messiah's work uh, mm. ministry. In fact, the name of his ministry is an inspiration. You know, just Praise just God. to think about Messiah's work. Actually, Praise taking God. from First uh, John, John chapter John two, two verse six, six yeah. that we should walk as he Indeed. walked. Mm. Wow, mm. What, what a ministry! No, mm. when you just think mm. about that, mm. it just mm. brings the consciousness mm. that hey, mm. you're supposed to walk like Jesus Hallelujah. did. So he's uh, he's the leader of that missionary body. And he's been a friend for a long time. I mean, yeah, I mean, God, there are very few good it's friends awesome. like it's this. Awesome. It's awesome. It's, it's <laughs> and, 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 and it's so beautiful it's serving the Lord together. Mm, yes. We are so thankful to God. And I believe that this is going to be a very exciting moment in the presence of God. Amen. We're going to uh, encourage, Amen. hear the word of God, encounter Amen. Jesus Amen. in a personal way. Amen. You know, one thrilling thing about our walk with God has always been this whole idea of the desire to not just be like Jesus, but to be the Christ. You know, this has been a passion. To be if you say you abide in him, then we also ought, it's a demand on our lives, to walk just as he walked. Hallelujah. And so we're not just trying to look at Jesus and try to imitate him. Jesus did not tell a lie, so I won't tell a lie. It's not mechanical. It's a flow. Okay. You know, as we abide, as we stay in him, we walk as he walks. Now, in the light of that, I'd like us to read a portion of scripture today. All right. It's I okay. feel that this is really the heart of it. Actually, the apostle Paul, by the Spirit of God, actually said this. And it, it's always been a blessing. Whenever I read that, I get so excited because Hallelujah. I feel that this Praise is really God. the heart of Praise dependence God. on Jesus Christ. Amen. It's actually found in the book of Philippians chapter 3. I'll read from verse 1 to All 3 right. so that it's we can okay. just get it in okay. context. He okay. actually said, finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. For me to write the same things to you is not tedious, but for you it is safe. All right? Introduction. He said rejoice in the Lord. So we rejoice in God. In Glory Lord. to God. In Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Verse 2 says, beware of dogs. Uh-oh. <laughs> he warns us immediately against, okay, let's see what he said. Beware of dogs. He said, beware of evil workers. And then he says, beware of the mutilation. I guess some translations might say the, uh, the concision. The concision. You know, and all of that. Mm. You know, but this is the new King mm. mm. version. Mm. Mm. All right, number three. It says, For we are the circumcision Hallelujah. who Praise worship God. God in the Spirit, rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence, confidence in the flesh. In the flesh. Wow. Mm. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory Amen. to God. Hallelujah. Now, 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 this is very amazing. I just mm. uh, a little background so that we can just mm. flow in this. We, we know about the, uh, the circumcision, uh, the, uh, which was actually the seal of the covenant God had with Abraham. You know, I would say that God gave Abraham the circumcision as his seal. And so we, we talk about uh, every one of his children were going to be circumcised. Even Abraham at an old age, he was circumcised. What is circumcision? I know everyone knows what circumcision is. Okay, let me not suppose everyone does. But actually, circumcision just means the cutting away of foreskin. Okay? And that's, that's really uh, one of the... Uh, the, the it, it's a practice among the Jews. You know, That was a sign of God's covenant people. Hallelujah. Because that was a sign of covenant. I remember even Moses when he was trans getting uh, on a journey at a particular time. And the, Bible said the angel of the Lord showed up to, to kill or to strike strike, you know, something wasn't right. And the Bible said that Moses had to take a stone immediately and cut off the foreskin of his kid. You know, that was that serious. It was just a sign of God's covenant. But according to God's standard, really, in the old covenant, the, the circumcision was an identity. Okay. It was a matter mm. of identity. It defined who a Jew really was. Mm. Such that even mm. in the New Testament, mm. when you read the book of Acts chapter, uh, chapter 15, you discover that there was this issue of those who get born again, the Gentiles, are they supposed to be circumcised? So all through the Old Covenant, or, I mean all through the uh, Bible, you know, especially the epistle, you see Paul attacking this whole problem mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. trying to bring in the Old Covenant circumcision into New Covenant life, which he fought. I mean, all through the scriptures. But you know what amazed me? That this same Paul could still come and say, there's a new kind of circumcision. How would he even use such an expression? Mm -hmm. First of all, he tells you rejoice in the Lord and all of that. Then he says, beware of dogs. Beware of, uh, evil workers. Say, be, beware of dogs, beware of evil workers. And then he says, beware of the mutilation. Now, who, who was he talking about? These same guys that were trying to bring or mix Judaism and Christianity. So you see that there was actually this mix that was going to happen. And Paul was like, no, no, no. If you belong to Jesus, belong to him, and discard everything that had to do with the old. When Jesus said it is finished on the cross, he wasn't saying that, well, like we've interpreted it. Well, I guess by revelation, all our problems, our trials, our challenges are finished. But I believe that Jesus was actually saying that the old covenant, that was actually what he was saying. He's done away with the old covenant. Hallelujah. After that, he put away Hallelujah. the old so that he can Hallelujah. establish the new. the new. So, And the new covenant produced the new creation. 
Hallelujah. And mm -hmm. this is what uh, Paul was actually mm -hmm. dealing with mm -hmm. here. So uh, before I go on with this, because I could just as well just keep riding on with this, but mm -hmm. I want to ask you, uh, what's the whole idea of having another, uh, the, the whole idea of having circumcision brought in again after mm -hmm. having you attacked the whole concept of circumcision, mixing it with Christianity? What do you think Paul had in mind when he was actually saying this? It's okay, like you said mm. earlier on, mm. uh, the new creation mm. is key. Yeah. It's a keynote in this whole thing. Mm. Right? Like he warned them earlier on, mm. they should be aware of dogs, mm. evil doers, yeah. and, and the mutilation or the concision. Or the concision. Yeah. Now, he said that we are we are the circumcision mm. Mm. that worships God in spirit. Yeah. All right, yeah. and the last line there of that mm -hmm. verse three says, "We don't have confidence oh, oh. in the flesh." Oh, hallelujah. Okay, hallelujah. anything that has to do with outside Jesus, hmm. we don't have a deal with it. Oh, praise God! That's powerful. Anything that is not Jesus, mm -hmm. we don't have to relate with it. And that's big. That's yes. Big. That's big. Now, we are the people. Mm. Of the new creation. Oh, hallelujah. The people, the people set apart. Mm. The new breed oh, hallelujah. of hallelujah. beings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so we should be aware mm. of the old ones, the dogs, wow. the evil doer. Mm. The mutant. They're trying to bring in the old into the new. Trying okay. to mix the old and the yes, new. Yes, I think at this point he was trying to, you know, the, the, the Philippi he was trying to 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 to, to to make them be aware mm. of, of the new life wow. that they have gotten in Christ oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. I believe in this, in this, he was trying to, he was re relating directly with the Philippi. Mm. Okay, in this mm. sense. Mm. Okay, trying to make them know that what the Jews are trying to introduce them into is not it at all. Mm. We have mm. a new life there in Christ. And they should. And we don't mix the they, old and the new. They should have confidence oh, hallelujah. in that. I think, I think, I think, I think, I don't know. You know, this is very big. Now, someone might read it and say, well, nobody is trying to get me to be circumcised today and all of that. It was a big deal in the days of Paul. I mean, today, Christianity has really, really thrived so much and we don't even get to talk about circumcision. In those days, it was kind of a hard thing to survive as being a Christian without being circumcised because a lot of people combine both Judaism and Christianity. And we still see people do that today. Even people try to bring in the law. They tell you that the law, you have to keep the laws and all of that. And that's why I say when we study God's word, it's important that we understand certain things about the word. To whom was this written? Okay. At what dispensation was it written? Was it post-redemption or pre-redemption? What place does it have in God? What was brought into the new creation from the old covenant? Because certain things were brought in. The prophets and all of the sayings about Jesus were brought in. Like when you read the book of Acts, those things were brought in. But there are certain things that were not brought in because they had a purpose. And about that, the law was a schoolmaster mm. to bring us to Christ. Not even me, not me. We were Gentiles. About that, we were without covenant, without hope, without not even part of the covenant, covenant common world of Israel. So we're totally hopeless and godless in this world. But thank God, about that, through the cross, there was. Uh, the, the wall of partition, separation was destroyed and one man, Jesus Christ, everyone has to be a new creation, whether Jew, whether G Greek, Hallelujah. whether Gentile, and all of that. Hallelujah. But this, I, I really want us to see this. The whole idea of he even bringing the word, for we are the circumcision. I thought the word circumcision will not occur again. But that brings us back to what we said earlier on, that the word circumcision actually has everything to do with identity. Because in this context, in this context, in fact, the whole idea of circumcision was God saying to Abraham, Your guys are going to be identified by circumcision. And it was a big deal when you check the law, those who were not circumcised were in trouble. In fact, they were in trouble after the eight day not circumcised. That was like sacrilege, you just don't dare it. So it was a big thing. And what was God doing? He was setting apart these people called the Jew. Remember, He had the purpose, it was through the Jew that the Messiah was introduced. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, but now the Messiah has been introduced. Like Hebrew tells us, when the new has come, the old is oh, past, it's, it's gone obsolete. It's mm -hmm. gone. Mm -hmm. So, he is saying this, that we now are God's identified, we are the ones having God's identity. identity. The current, present God's identity. Now, this is not to say, you know, the people who say that the Jews have been replaced by Christians. No, no. God still has his covenant with the Jews. He still loves them and, mm -hmm. and he, still, he has plans for them. Mm -hmm. But the truth is that the old covenant has been done away with. And eventually the scriptures say all these rich and the The gospel is going to be preached to them. They're going to get to hear the word, the, the prophetic, the, I mean, the end time prophecies and all of that. God has plans for Israel, the Israelites, the Jews. So we're not discarding them. They're, they are God's people. But the point is this. God is saying that my new order now 
is that there is a new set of folks who are called new creations. We're not even talking about new covenant people now because you can't tell me new covenant when I didn't have the old. Okay. You know, okay. I, we were Gentiles, okay. you know. Okay. Okay. Uh, you know, if, if you really check God's, the way God sees everybody in the world is in three classes, not more than that. The Jew, the Greek, and the church. So who are the Jews? God's old covenant people. Who are the Gentiles? Everyone who is not a Jew. It just, it just means mm, non-Jew. Mm, mm, mm. Who is the new creation? Mm. The one who is mm. in Christ. If any man be in, in Christ, Christ he is a new, new creation. creation. So whether Jew or Gentile or Greek, as, as some versions put it, being in Christ changes your identity. Everything. And Paul is saying that in this new identity, what marks us is not the cutting away of the first king, physical stuff. Hallelujah. He said that but it's, he said we are the circumcision. First, we worship God in spirit. As opposed to worship in, worshiping in the flesh. Then, secondly, it says, we rejoice in, in Christ. Christ Jesus. Not, we don't rejoice in ourselves. We rejoice in Christ Jesus, and then we have no confidence in the flesh. Jesus. Now, we're going to come back with this. I think that there's something we want to share Hallelujah. on this Hallelujah. that's really going to touch you. You're going to be mm. so, 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 you're going to be so blown Amen. by this Amen. because there's a, there's a revelation of God's word that's Amen. going to come to you, Amen. and it's going to come with Amen. power. Please Amen. stay tuned. Amen. Click on the next Amen. video.